Let's talk about the future of creating spatial videos and immersive content for the Apple Vision Pro. First off, you can actually record spatial videos with an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max. This is one of the most affordable and easy ways to capture the footage, and you can easily airdrop it or view the videos on the Vision Pro through the Photos app, and pretty much it's not gonna get much easier than this. However, this will be the lower quality and the most limited capture that will be available. Now, I've actually done some spatial videos on my iPhone 15 Pro Max, like I went to a Cavs game and I recorded my son doing some stuff and it's okay, like to a certain degree, like if, if it's a memory, like if you're recording your kid on Christmas and they're opening up their gifts and they're enjoying themselves, it's cool. But for like regular everyday life experiences, it's, it's just kind of meh. I'll, I'll be honest about it. But moving right along, at WWDC, Apple announced new support and partnerships for capturing spatial video and creating immersive experiences. We will be getting support with the new equipment coming from Canon and Blackmagic along with support through Final Cut Pro on the Mac and DaVinci Resolve. The main focus is on the dual fisheye lenses. If you are new to this, basically a dual fisheye lens splits a normal image into two images, which act like, you know, kind of similar to your eyes. And then the software is used to like process and stitch them together into a spatial format or an immersive format. So I want to go ahead and just mention this now because I already feel the comments coming in are saying, Trent, hey, this is VR 180. This is nothing new. We had this four or five years ago. Why is everybody talking about it now? Honestly, because I'll be honest, I didn't know about this four or five years ago. That's just to be honest. I just didn't know. <laughs> like, unfortunately, it really took an Apple Vision Pro for me to pay attention to this type of stuff. And oh my goodness, when I went down the rabbit hole of seeing how many VR 180 videos are available on YouTube, I'm like, okay, I finally see the light. So that's where I'm at. So I, I get it. I know everybody's going to be jumping on the keyboards and saying there's nothing new, but Trust me, I'm, I'm with you guys. I'm on board and I'm liking this stuff. Canon has a new lens coming out that will work on the Canon R7 to capture spatial content. This new lens is the Canon RFS 3.9 millimeter F3.5 STM dual fisheye lens. Woo. The Canon R7 is currently the only camera that will have support for the new lens via a firmware update according to Canon. This new lens will have a starting price of $1,100, and currently the retail price of the Canon R7 is around $1,500. Some places have a Canon R7 on sale for, let's say, about $1,400. So basically, if you're getting the new R7 camera and the new lens to shoot VR content, aka spatial content, for the Apple Vision Pro, you will be spending about $2,500. If you look at the WWDC keynote, the camera lens shown in the presentation is not the 3.9 millimeter lens I was just talking about. It's actually another new lens from Canon, which is the 7.8 millimeter F4 STM dual fisheye lens. So there will be two lenses that work with the R7, one being a pricier L series lens and one being a cheaper lens. According to BNH, this lens is optimized for capturing spatial video for the Apple Vision Pro, essentially, it's designed for Apple spatial video. Now, if you kind of go back in time and look at some stuff, you had the Canon R5 and you had the 5.2 millimeter full frame dual fisheye lens that goes with that. I'm pretty sure that this is going to work along with Apple stuff, but they just haven't come out and announced it like directly. As far as we know, as far as like the 3.9 millimeter part, and this is where things kind of get into like camera nerdiness or whatnot. If as if I already haven't crossed that plane. The 3.9 millimeter lens, which a couple of people have you know, tried out or whatnot, that is on an APS-C body. So it's a camera with a smaller sensor, whereas like, you know, like the R5 is like a bigger sensor type of camera. So essentially, you know, the R7 is supposed to record in 4K. This is gonna split the image into a 2K image per eye. There's a whole bunch of stuff about, you know, pixel density and whether it's gonna be sharper and how it looks and blah, 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 blah. And essentially what this is gonna do is this is gonna bring up this whole next conversation where we're gonna talk about, which is the R5 versus, 
the R7. Now the Canon R5 has a full frame sensor while the R7 has an APS-C sensor. The R5 is going to be better in low light and it has a shallower depth of field essentially. The R5 is gonna have 8K versus the R7 which is gonna have 4K. So with 8K, you're gonna have way more detail. So for things that are like further away, you're gonna have more clarity. And if you take 8K and you split it in half, that's basically 4K per eye that you're looking at versus let's say like the R7, which has 4K, you split that in half, and you're looking at 2K resolution per eye. Here's the caveat though. The R5 is a lot more expensive than the R7. So before, if you wanted to jump into this and let's say you were on Canon, to get the R5 and to get the 5.2 millimeter lens, you had to spend about five grand. The R7 also has a smaller sensor, but it's also a lot cheaper and a lot lighter, which is pretty helpful for some people who want a smaller setup, or let's say they're on the go, or let's say instead of just wanting one setup, you want two setups. Let's say you wanna have multiple cameras. Well, if you get the R7 and you get the smaller lens, yes, you're losing out on some quality, but you can have more cameras and have more angles and that's probably like less stuff that you gotta move around. The full frame fisheye lens for the Canon R5 and R5C does not have a stepper motor in it, so it doesn't have autofocus. That's like one of the main things that a lot of people miss. I missed it too, because I honestly am just learning about all this stuff. The dual fisheye lens for the R7, at least the 3.9 millimeter, is going to have autofocus because it has a stepper motor in it and that's what's required for it to have autofocus. However, in a B&H video, they said it's going to be one shot autofocus, but not movie servo autofocus. So what's the difference between those two? Basically, you're going to you know press the button on the camera. It's going to autofocus, but you're not going to be able to like move around and it just track you out throughout the whole frame. So, yeah, I just hit you guys with a whole bunch of camera nerd stuff about Canon and these VR lenses or whatnot. If you want all the details. There will be a link down in the description below. Go ahead and click on that and read to your heart's content. Um, the only other thing that I know about this 7.8 millimeter lens is that it's supposed to come out somewhere between September and December. Now that we've talked about Canon for 99% of this video, <laughs> let's go ahead and talk about black magic. So also at the WWDC event, we saw some black magic, you know, cameras or whatnot. And we gotta talk about those. So in a tweet on Twitter, x.com, whatever you wanna call it, they said, introducing Blackmagic Ursa Cine Immersive, new camera in development designed to capture content for the Apple Vision Pro with an 8160 by 7200 resolution per eye, 16 styles of dynamic range for 90 frames per second, stereoscopic 3D immersive cinema content and more available later in 2024, learn more. Okay, Trent, what was all that nerdy stuff that you read off and how does it make sense at all? Blackmagic is coming out with a new camera. It's gonna have two lenses on it. So it's like the whole dual fisheye thing. It's going to record 8K in each lens. So essentially this is gonna be a 16K image and it's going to record this at 90 frames per second. I, I am just worried at how much this thing is gonna cost, but for some reason, you know, black magic is able to kind of just go under like the industry standard of cost and all that stuff. And then obviously stereoscopic, you know, 3D is basically, you know, stereo to 3D eyes. I I don't want to go like super deep into the whole definition, but you you guys get it, right? Like that's just what they're calling it. It's, that's the name for this stuff is stereoscopic 3d i just hate saying stereoscopic all throughout the video so they also announced support for immersive video in davinci resolve in another tweet basically in my opinion this will be the gold standard of creating immersive content and yeah that's kind of where we're at i wish we had more details on it there's like a whole facebook post that you can kind of read through but pretty much everything i said kind of just summarizes it up they're going to have this camera it's going to come out and they're going to use it for all this you know different stuff I even saw a picture of this thing on a drone and I fly drones. Like if you guys didn't know, I'm interested in like, you know, flying drones and cameras and all that stuff. But I could only imagine them taking this camera and putting it on a drone and seeing stuff from like that bird's eye view. Even when you go back to Apple immersive experience and that girl that was like on the tightrope or whatever, 
the first shot when you come into that is literally like I think it's on a helicopter that they have this camera mounted. So if you could put this thing on a drone and fly around the city and do tours and stuff, that would just absolutely be crazy and blow my mind. So, yeah, we have a lot of details, but we still kind of have more questions and answers on where spatial content, where, you know, immersive content is going. The only issue I have as a Sony shooter is Sony get into the game. I, I don't want to have to buy a whole nother camera just to play in this arena. So Sony, if you're out there, if you're watching, if you, if you could hear my plight, please come out with a lens, you know, a stereoscopic VR lens, whatever that we could put on, I don't know, a one or a seven five or something that can record, for, you know, AK or whatever. Like I don't even need to record an AK 60. I just record an AK 30, but that's where we're at. And that's where like all the details are going. So that's basically my entire brain dump of everything and how I feel about it. But I'm glad to see like this stuff is moving forward and we're going to see more support for the vision pro in the future. The vision pro isn't dead. Just people aren't getting clicks on it that much anymore. So nobody really cares, but I'm still here for it. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in the next video. All right, y'all take it easy. Peace.